We're going to Trace Gallagher on breaking news on the Epstein autopsy reports. Trace. Yeah, the autopsy has now dropped, Charles, and we are being told they have ruled the medical examiner this was a suicide, saying that Jeffrey Epstein killed himself at 6.30 in the morning, that would be last Saturday morning, and that it was suicide, that he tied a bed sheet to the bunk in his cell, and that he knelt toward the floor. This is not going to calm the critics because so far we haven't got any information about maybe potentially how he did this. All it says is he tied the bed sheet to the bunk and knelt toward the floor. The big controversy in all of this for the past couple of days has been if in fact or how in fact he broke his hyoid bone, which is near the Adam's apple in men. He also, according to the Washington Post, broke several other bones. We're waiting for an actual hard copy of the autopsy so we can go through it line by line. The headline is they're ruling this as a suicide. They have not changed their mind. The, the question becomes, will they answer the questions as to how he got these numerous broken bones? Will they answer the questions about what was on the outside of his neck? Was it a straight bruise, meaning from a bed sheet, or were there various bruises? Remember, back on July 23rd, uh, Epstein had a number of bruises on his neck, and he said he was beaten up by a cellmate. But they still ruled that as self-inflicted wounds. That's when they placed him on suicide watch. And then six days later, for some reason, because of pressure from his lawyers, because of other protocols that still are kind of baffling the experts, he was taken off of suicide watch. And then late last week, he was found dead in his cell. The question in all of this remains is how he got the force to break the hyoid bone. That's been one of the major points of contention. We talked to Dr. Cyril Weck last hour when I filled in on, on Shepard Smith reporting, and he was telling us that to actually break the hyoid bone, you need a tremendous amount of pressure, which is why it's much more common, Charles, in strangulation than it is in suicide. So what they're saying here is what is the circumstance to how he generated enough force to actually break that bone in his neck. You see a picture of it right there. Did he fall off the bunk? Did he jump off the bunk? Did he roll off the bunk? How is it that he was able to generate the force of breaking that bone? Now, we should note that in older people, the hyoid bone does break a bit more easier than it does in younger people. Jeffrey Epstein, 66 years old, about 5 feet 11. Did he jump off? Could he have generated enough force to actually break that? That's the question that people are asking. But for now, it appears to be a settled matter because nobody's going to adjudicate this and say, okay, let's go back. We want answers. Right now, the medical examiner's word on this historically has been final. They have ruled this as suicide. There is an investigation going on right now in Congress. There is an internal investigation going on inside the prison. The warden has been reassigned. The two guards who were there, one wasn't even really a guard. It was a corrections employee who just happened to be helping out. They apparently were asleep when the suicide happened and then went back and tried to falsify the documents to say that they were, in fact, following procedure by checking on Jeffrey Epstein every 30 minutes. That's the question that remains is, what happens now? Do they take this thing at face value and agree suicide and move on? Or do the numerous alleged victims of Jeffrey Epstein and others want to pursue this further? They want to find out more. That is what is yet to be seen. But right now, the bottom line from the medical examiner is that they are maintaining that these wounds were self-inflicted and that it was suicide.